Okay, lastly, podcast 4.6. This is the limiting reactants. I kind of like this blue color. I might stick with this for a little bit. So that's why you've seen it lately. But anyways, we're going to be talking about these things called limiting reactants or limiting reagents is another word, R-E-A-G-E-N-T-S. It means the same thing. So a limiting reactant or a limiting reagent. The idea behind this is that we assume completion when we're talking about chemical reactions. And what completion means is that you have enough reactant or enough reactants to produce maximum product or all product without uh, any reactant left over. Without any reactant left over. And now this does not happen very frequently. It doesn't happen normally. Uh, most of the time, or just about every time we do a chemical reaction, we're going to run out of one substance over the other. And that's what limiting reactants describes. Uh, sometimes we cannot go to completion. And what we have is we have to look at the molar ratios from the uh, balancing reaction and the, the stoichiometry podcast 4.5. The molar ratios determine limiting reactants. Limiting, I'm writing too much on this slide, limiting reactants. So we need to be looking at the ratio of one compound to another uh, to determine which one is going to be limiting in the end or not. Uh, and this is because chemicals are finite, are finite. And finite means it's, it's limited, a limited amount. And this is easy to picture. Uh, when I light a match in class, um, the match eventually goes out. And it's not because I run out of, um, of oxygen and of the wood. I'm running out of the wood before I run out of oxygen. That wood is going to be the limiting piece of that chemical reaction. So uh, we're going to look at a lot of these as we go through the year. Uh, the limiting reactant is the chemical in a reaction that is depleted or the one that runs out before we get to completion in the chemical reaction. And again, that's because the chemicals are finite. So we're going to look at an example where we can determine which of these chemicals is going to be the limiting one in a, in a reaction. So example one, how many grams of calcium sulfate is precipitated when 5.2 grams of calcium chloride is reacted with 3.1 grams of sodium sulfate? So there's a lot of vocabulary in here. If we're precipitating something, remember this is going to be a product. Okay, this is chapter uh, three stuff. So everything is tying together. That's why I'm so picky about a lot of these skills and why you cannot forget something after you take the test. So I'm going to run a sidebar over here because we're going to be looking at a lot of different things. So the first thing that we need to do with this equation is, or with this problem is write a reaction. Okay, it gives us all the information that we need to write that reaction. How many grams of calcium sulfate is precipitated? This is a product, right? When 5.2 grams of calcium chloride, so calcium chloride is CaCl2, 2 plus 1 negative, is reacted with 3.1 grams of sodium sulfate. So this is Na2SO4. And I want to know how much calcium sulfate is precipitated. So I'm just switching my reactants, right, where calcium sulfate is one of the products. And then I get sodium chloride in the end. So not only do we have to write the reaction, but we need to balance the reaction. Remember, every reaction, whenever we're using it, must be balanced. So calcium is 1 to 1. Chlorine is 2 to 1, so I need a 2 here. And that also balances out my sodium. So this reaction is 1 to 1 to 1 to 2. The next thing we need to do is we need to convert grams to moles for each. Convert gram to mole for both. I can only look at one substance at a time, so I'm going to be running two separate reactions. So the first one is going to be the calcium chloride reaction. And up here it says I have 5.2 grams. So these questions are a lot more involved than single reactant questions. And then the second one is 3.1 grams of sodium sulfate, Na2SO4. Okay. So the first thing, again, write the reaction and balance it. Second, convert from grams to moles for both. Thirdly, we need to convert substances for each. Convert substance. 
So I need to go from calcium chloride to calcium sulfate. That's what I want to know. How much calcium sulfate am I going to get if calcium chloride is limiting? So let's go ahead and do the mole conversion. We know that one mole is 142.04 grams. And then I can convert substances, right? So calcium chloride on the bottom. And let's see, calcium sulfate on top. And this particular ratio is just a one to one. On the bottom, I also need to carry out a gram to mole conversion. So one mole on top. And sodium sulfate, or I'm sorry, I have my masses upside down. This is not 142, this is 110.98. I have them upside down in my notes, I'm sorry about that. This one is 142.04. Uh, and then we need to convert our substance, so I'm canceling out sodium sulfate in this one. And I'm still converting to calcium sulfate. Okay, I want to know how much calcium sulfate for both of these products. And this is also a one-to-one -one ratio. At this point, I want you to stop. So once you convert your substances, stop here, and then we can see how many moles we're going to be getting out. So when I run this conversion, the calcium chloride, 5.2 grams of calcium chloride when converted to calcium sulfate, so my calcium chloride is gone, my grams are gone, will give me 0 0.047 moles of calcium sulfate. This bottom conversion, the 3.1 grams of sodium sulfate, again, grams are canceled, as well as sodium sulfate, giving me moles of calcium sulfate, and this gives me 0 0.022 moles of calcium sulfate. So once you convert your substances, you need to stop here. And this is where we're going to make our decision about which reactant is limiting. Because in step four, the fewest moles produced, the fewest moles produced is limiting. Sorry, I have to write small, but the fewest moles produced is limiting. So when I'm looking at this, I get 0 0.047 moles from calcium chloride and 0 0.022 moles from sodium sulfate. That means this compound or the sodium sulfate is going to be limiting because I get fewer product. And the way to think about it is this. If I say I have 3.1 grams of sodium sulfate, I am assuming calcium chloride is in excess. I have a lot. On the other hand, if I have 5.2 grams of calcium chloride, I'm assuming that sodium sulfate is in excess. I'm not limiting it when I'm looking at these reactions. I am saying that this would be limiting and I would get this much. Or sodium sulfate would be limiting and I would get this much. So that means that the sodium sulfate is going to be my limiting reactant because I only get 0 0.22 or 0 0.022 moles of calcium sulfate out. Once you choose your limiting, you can convert back to moles. So I'll put number five down here, convert back to grams. So now my starting amount is 0 0.022 moles of calcium sulfate. I can convert this. One mole of calcium sulfate is equal to 136.14 grams. And so in the end, I will get just about exactly three grams of calcium sulfate out. Okay. This is a limiting reactant question. It is much more involved than a simple stoichiometry problem because I have to consider both substances. There's a couple tricks when we're looking at these. There's some things to look for. The first thing you need to look for is you have two quantities given. Two quantities. Oops. T-I-E-S. Can't write tonight. Two quantities given. I am limiting both. If I'm giving you two quantities, I am limiting... Both, uh, both of your substances. And you need to solve for both equation. And then number two, it's a, uh, another thing to look for is that the question could say the reaction stops. Stops before completion. So either in the question, well, both in the question, either you're going to have two quantities given or a reaction is going to stop before you reach completion. If you have either of these, you must carry out a limiting reactant set. Um, we always follow the same solution pattern. Okay, So convert all your masses into moles, and then convert all your moles of one substance to moles of another, and then convert back to grams. So follow the same solution process for a limiting reactant. This time, you just do it two times, twice. And then finally, like I just said, 
uh, when you have two amounts of substances, you need two reactions or two uh, two solved problems. Or I don't remember how it says. You need two separate calculations. So let's let's keep the wording the same. Two separate calculations. Okay, so if you see two quantities of a substance given in any type of question, it is a limiting reactant problem, and you need to find which one of them is going to run out first to get the right number of product. So again, more practice. Read chapter 3, section 8. This is the end of the chapter. And book questions 57 to 62, and then a limiting reactant worksheet. And again, this one, I don't know if it copied or not, so you might need to check in class if I have this worksheet or not, if you'd like to have it. Um, this is going to be the end of chapter three. This is included on the midterm, so please practice it. And this one, um, there's a lab along with it, so you need to look up lab three on the website because it is not in your packet. I decided to revise some things. Um, after you do lab three, you can get this objective checked off, uh, and then you need to take the test. So there's a lot that you need to do along with this. Please, please, please practice this, practice this, practice this to make sure that you really have this skill down. So if you have questions, you can ask me in class, and we'll talk more then.